Hello everyone and welcome to episode 8 of Chess Opening Traps. In today's episode, I have two traps for you, namely the Blackburn Shilling Gambit Trap, as well as its lesser known sister trap, the Fritz Trap. Anyways, let's start off the Blackburn Shilling Gambit Trap, which comes after Pawn to E4, we go Pawn to E5, Knight to F3 attacking here, Knight to C6 defending, and Bishop to C4, the Italian game, all very standard, but now we play the dubious and not at all standard move, Knight to D4. This is the Blackburn Shilling Gambit. The first thing you need to know is that it's not really a gambit because while it does gambit off this pawn, this goes into the trap, but it's not actually a good move. If instead white simply like castles here or plays, you know, knight to c3 or pawn to d3 or just trades and then castles, the white has a small advantage because we're just down on development, this pawn's awkward, and because of that, this is a very dubious gambit. However, the trap here after they captures is very common at beginner level, and I cannot stop you from playing it, at which point we will go queen to g5. With this move, we are attacking the knight in the center, as well as attacking the g2 pawn, however, it does nothing about this fret on f7. And if they capture with the knight, then now they have fallen into the trap, even though they get this fork. Uh, before I go into this, I do want to show you if they capture with the bishop, which is their absolute best hope here to try and not lose immediately, we'll move over to d8. And the key thing that white has to know here is to sacrifice their bishop by castling here, because otherwise uh, this g2 pawn here will fall. And after we capture, pawn to c3. Knight drops back to e6, and now to defend this pawn, a simple pawn to d3. We do have a small advantage here because we have a, a knight for two pawns. However, white it does have a very large center. Our king is on d8, and soon they're probably going to go f4, and this game is far from over. But like I said, if they capture on f7 with the knight, then they are now completely lost here because even though they get this fork, we now capture on g2. We are attacking the rook in the corner, uh, and they only have one move to actually defend it, which is rook over to f1 here. They do have one other attempt here, which is capturing our rook, because after we capture theirs, technically white is up one point of material here, but we can force a win after they block the check. We capture here. If they block the queen, then we simply capture it, so they have to block the bishop, and you have many, many ways to win here. Uh, bishop to c5 is namely mate in 8. However, if you want to simply be up a lot of material, knight captures on c2 here. They are forced to sacrifice the queen because otherwise they would get checkmated. Yeah. So knight captures on h8 certainly does not work. Instead, rook over to f1, defending the rook is their only attempt, but this once again does not work at all. We capture on e4 here, checking their king. If they block the queen, we just capture it, we're completely winning. So because of that, most people here will instead play bishop back to e2, at which point, uh, if you're a beginner and you do not know the move, I would recommend to pause the video and try to find the move here, which is knight to f3, checkmate in one. They cannot capture our knight because our queen pins it to their king. Knight checks the king, it's completely boxed in by its own pieces, and that is a very nice checkmate in just 7 moves. Now let's get into its sister trap, which is the Fritz trap, and it once again comes after pawn e4, pawn e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and after bishop to c4, instead of an immediate knight to d4 here, and because of this, this trap is a little more uh, sound, we instead play knight to f6 here. We attack the pawn, and we actually invite the fried liver attack here with knight to g5. And this is a very good attacking weapon for white. However, here we play in the main line. We go pawn to d5. They capture. But instead of playing knight to a5 here, which is the tried and true main line, we instead play knight to d4. This is the Fritz variation, hopping our knight into the center. And what white should do here is play pawn to c3 at which point after pawn to b5, this gets into some theory which is kind of outside the realm of this opening. Instead, after pawn to d6, which is extremely common by the way, this is the second most common move which around, 
with around 30,000 games played is not very good and you will win about 80% of games here because after we capture with the queen, white can be fine here if they simply castle and do not capture on f7 with their knight. And if they do capture an f7 for the knight instead, then now this is actually completely losing for them because even though they get this fork, our queen goes over to c6 here. We attack their bishop and we attack the g2 pawn all the way over here, but their bishop also has to keep the defense of this knight, which is attacked by our king. They cannot defend everything. Real quick, before I go further into this, I also want to show you if they capture an f7 with the bishop, then here we do have about an even position here. Uh, king will go up to e7 to keep uh, contact with this. Bishop will drop back, and after we capture their bishop, they capture. We now play pawn to h6. Attack their knight, their only good square is to drop back to f3, and now pawn up to e4. Attacking it again, once again their only good square is to back up, this time to g1, and in this position, even though we are down one point of material, we have a lot of compensation because white has actually no development, literally none, and you know, king will walk over to f7, bishop will get out, bishop will get out, we do not have a bad position here by any means. But let's go back to the main line, captures on f7 queen over to c6 here, attack the bishop and all that stuff. Because of all that madness, what almost everybody does here is simply capture the rook and sacrifice their bishop because um, then they will probably be up a little bit of material. However, we do not capture the bishop. Instead, we set our eyes on a bigger target, the king. We play queen captures on g2. We attack the rook, and now you can see the same themes are coming back. Now their only square to defend it is once again rook over to f1 here, and now we play the same check, queen e4 check. Once again, if they block the queen, we can just capture it. We're up a lot of material here, we're completely winning, and if instead they drop back with the bishop, then once again we have the exact same formation of pieces, and we once again have the absolutely beautiful knight to f3 smothered checkmate. Alright, thank you so much for watching, uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed, if you want to see more you can check out this video where I show two traps from the England Gambit as well as a counter trap that White can play against the England Gambit. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you next time.